Coming your way in just a couple of minutes for the final game of the evening. It is game number 14 in your bracket, and it should be a dandy. It will be the number four seed, Team 454, Emerald Worth, facing off against the number five seed, Jeep Shop, Team TPS, down to Earth Elite. Team 454 is your 2011 Class A World Champions. Gene Shot coming off a thrilling 27-26 victory over PWS earlier today. The, the two teams have had the toss. The two teams had the toss. PWS will be your home team. They are over in the first base dugout. They're wearing their black jerseys tonight with the white caps and the white pants. And their opponents, the visitors for tonight's game, Jean Shot, over in the third base dugout. They're wearing the red jerseys with the black and white piping, the gray pants and the red caps.
All right, Gene Shop, 454. This is our night camp. Out for round number one. That was Chad McLean. Chad with the infield top, so now there's one away and stepping into the box. It'll be their first baseman, number 17, Eric Thompson. That'll bring Eric Thompson to the plate. It's a tradition for us at the men's major. We're glad to bring in with us DW. You won't be able to hear me through that headset, but we can hear you, so that's the good news. Uh, uh, hold on one second. Let's make sure. We get you plugged in, though. That's the key. Rick Robertson is a... Uh, we're missing out on his coverage. We're glad to have you with us. Softballcenter.com, that's your site, and it is some great things for you this year, DW. It seems right. like on your site overall. It's been a great season. Uh, I, what happened to Rick? Has he been here? Yeah, Rick's been in and out. Oh. He's just, uh, I think it's been one of those days, and I know there's some people out there that have complained that I, I guess the understanding that they've gone to one pitch for the C and the D is just, just a disaster up. day. I mean, right. what uh, Yeah, you have what your, can you do, you know? 
you have your daily rains and it rained in different parts of the city and they're playing in so many different parts of the city that there's not much you can do. You have to catch up somehow. And the unfortunate thing in this tournament, DW, is we're at the beginning of the tournament where there's more games where if this happens on a Saturday or Sunday, sometimes it's not as big of a deal because you can just push that couple of the games you have. Later in the day, you usually have more fields as well to play on. Right. I think, you know, they... I think there's more rain in the forecast, you know, the next two days, like 50%. So I don't think we're done with the rain. Lee Powers at the plate. His father traveling down. He's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Right. I watched his dad play and his, his uncle as well back in the day. What's your thoughts on the men's major so far here in 2011? Uh, we had a few good games today. You know, last night, last night were a bunch of blowouts, but Powers flew out to end the inning right there. They put up a zero. Yeah, zero. Yeah, they did. What do you expect? Uh, is it an advantage or disadvantage? I mean, you talk about the top seed respond to the second seed GTL. I guess the good news for them is they're not going to be playing tomorrow as in a couple hours from now, one in the morning. But they do have to play more than one game tomorrow as well. Right. I, I think we saw with Suncoast that these guys are used to playing multiple games in a row. But when you're on the baseball field, it's, uh, it's a little more taxing on the center fielders and some of the outfielders. So I, I would call it a disadvantage for Rosmondo. You know, they're... They like the one game a night down here, and you know they can go all out for one game. And so I'd say it's a disadvantage for them being a little bit older, but they'll probably be fine. Well, that's one of the big differences to the men's major to what you see throughout the year in tournaments where you know in the the tournaments we have where we play two tournaments in a week and they're playing tons of games over the course of a weekend. Right. You know, with this one just a game a day, if you're on the winner's side. Um, well, you can send questions to you at softballcenter.com. Tell us a little bit about your site, DW. Uh, softballcenter.com is built around the major program, which basically is USSSA now. It used to be all four associations. Now it's it's 95% USSSA, and, and so that's where I focus most of my uh, tournament reports after each of the weekends. And... I'll be doing some broadcasting tomorrow, 8 o'clock a.m. start for the losers bracket here. Um, I think Taylor Maid's playing. Can't remember who they play. But. And I'm sure you're gonna have a great group like we did today that was tuning in from their office. Yeah, right, right. That's what I I w would have been doing if I was working, <laughs> <laughs> trying to at least. We had a guy that was after Matt's own heart. He was watching us on one screen. He had work on the other. And then Facebook and his fantasy baseball team on another tab on that work screen. Right. You see uh, Kevin start off with a double. Kevin Bazet. Joe wants to know, are they going to update the bracket times for tomorrow's game? The answer is yes, but if you go to conference2ssa.com, the schedule is already up to date with the, the up to date times. And the big change tomorrow night is we get so used to that Friday night home run derby, which is such a spectacle. But uh, we're going to have to see as Mitch Mabe is going to ground out for out number one. Those guys hit their home runs on Saturday night, which could, uh, could or could not be bad as well. I guess it depends on where you are in the tournament. Yeah, I get. Are there games out? There's not games after the home run derby. There's right? not games after the home run derby. Now, that's so I think right. that's better for the players because it used to be right in the middle of those two Friday night games. So Rosmondo, I think, usually ends up hitting in the derby and then having to play a game. So it's good for them. Bubba Mack flies out for out number two, but 454 is going to score their first run of the ball game. So, Joe's, there's your answer. Again, softballcenter.com. You can find the shout box where you can ask DW some questions right here on air. 
Also, if you're on our USSA Slow Pitch Softball page, you can add some comments. I know just a, a little bit of confusion. A bunch of people trying to tune in now and saying, hey, we're expecting to see Arna Metals and Rosmato. We're expecting to see GTL. And here we are at Gene Shop and 454. And it's just one of those wild days that you hate to have, uh, right. especially if you're a tournament director. Hey, could you imagine being a tournament director for the D today with 216 teams? Different parks having rain, some parks not having rain. That's a disaster. Right. In some ways, it's funny you say that because I was in the uh, office when Don DiDonatus was rebracketing this one, as, if you will, and that's what he was mentioning. He said it's only a 16 tournament, it's a 16 team yeah. tournament. So, right. Brent Griffin with a double there, and now a fly out from uh, to Kyle Moyer. And Kyle Moyer with the fly ball to one center nothing. field. Nothing right now on softballcenter.com. We'll see if we can yeah, hit the refresh button. We couldn't get the feed embedded there, so we're not going to have a lot of traffic until tomorrow, probably. Two up for Gene Shop at the top of the second. It'll be Jenter, Booth, and Kane. But I know they always like to have you on the broadcast, DW. There's always some uh, good questions in the... The biggest question I think for some people at this point is uh, they're already looking forward to next year, and what do you hear is happening with the right. move of the men's I, game? I, I don't like that question because I don't like to talk about next year before this year's over, but uh, it's going to be musical chairs, except for Rismondo. Uh, teams are just going to... You're going to hear the same names, but they're going to be on different, wearing different uniforms. I'm already talking to the Dean Marini guys. They had Made me aware that Gino Buck, who's in their commercial right now, representing the Dean Marini bat, will be swinging an Easton bat next year. All right. So they'll need a recreation of their commercial. Right. Yeah, more work for you, right? I guess that's a good thing in some ways, though, All as right. well, right? Yep. Yeah, Gino Buck is the big... He's really the second best pitcher, close to being the best pitcher in softball. And, and to beat Rismondo, you need Buck on your team so he came at uh i know there were teams fighting over him and uh it sounds like easton won the battle jd genter from jasper tennessee jd will be back with shop next year and he's swinging that 28 end load z1000 as you can see in the commercial Oh, 42,500 page views on the conference USSA website since we launched. So much technology in these bats, but some changes coming down the pipe as well. I think Rick, you might ask Rick about the changes. He, he'll know better. I try not to follow the bats too much. Unless you know about it. Well, oh, just a couple of adjustments. I know that uh, David Evil, who's the general counsel for USSA, is going to get inducted into the Hall of Fame this year and uh, instrumental in first creating the classic M, which has uh, been a great ball. Then they've changed to the classic plus and, of course, the... Uh, The stadium, ZN. Mr. Hicks saying hello. Pop up by Booth down the left field line. It's going to be out number one. Looks like someone, uh, we were talking about Geno Buck going to Easton, and somebody posted here that, does that mean he's going to EWS? No. It's Easton's Helmer's team, right? Yes. Next year, Fred Helmer's Easton team has picked up Geno Buck. And in reality, all that I've heard from the De Marini bat manufacturer, which is a fairly good source, I would say, is that he's going to be swinging at an Easton bat, which in some ways some of these guys are loyal to their bats, but, you know, there's guys that are even on the Worth Rismondo team that swing some other bat manufacturer. I guess it just depends on how important you are. Right. DW, what? if you got down there, they might let you swing whatever bat you wanted to as right. well. I, I don't think they'd put me in, but... Yeah, John, it's John, John Hickey 
from Magic tuning in to Softball Center. Fly out by uh, Matt King. High fly ball to left field from Matt King. On the play, Gentry tags, it goes to second, but now two outs. And stepping into the box, it'll be the shortstop, number eight, Brad Record. It's cooled off a little bit. Flag, flags are not even moving out there. That was a really wild night last night. We still saw some home runs, but man, the wind was really whipping in, wasn't it? Uh, yep. And as usual here, the you know the ball goes to right field a little better usually. Teams are loading up on left-hand hitters, but right now that flag's not even moving, so it's a fair game for everybody. DC2 wants to know, is KJ pitching for 454? Says he's always been good. Yep. It's Kevin Johnson on the mound. Just and walked. And that's a base on balls for Brad Record. So now Locked there's record. two on with two outs. And stepping into the box, it'll be the pitcher, double zero, Shane Spicer. Anyone going to pick up Jeff Hall? That's one of our questions. Uh, that We get that question all the time. You probably get it too. And, no one picked him up for the major, and from what I hear, he's really enjoying himself on the home run tours, and his knees are giving him problems, so I'm not sure we'll see him back on the major circuit. Shane Spicer, got a nice picture of him on our Facebook page. Gets tough, you know, you talk to some of these guys, and Scooter Nostali down the line, actually his friend of me on Facebook, and you get to sense it. Maybe a little bit of relief. It was probably weird that first weekend when you don't go out and play yeah. in these tournaments after traveling. But, man, these guys still got families at home, and I'm sure the family's got to enjoy having their, their Papa Bear back at home as well. Right. I, I see the same Facebook post by Scoot, uh, Scott all the time. It looks yeah, like he's enjoying his time off. Base hit by Spicer scores uh, Jenner. Ties the game. Time run. It's one to one, two on, two outs. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the left fielder, number one, Rick. So watch it. Now you can hit us up with questions at softballcenter.com or the USSA Facebook page. Bernie's monitor monitoring it all and shifting uh, camera views, right? Every once in a while. We've got to not see any crew, but you know, they've been there since uh, 9.30, so every once right. in a while to... Get a little bit of a break is a good good thing. But some of the best in the business bring you the sights and sounds. Uh, Confused wants to know, so Gino is still with GTL next year, but swinging Eastern, or is he switching teams too? He's and switching so, teams. Right. I guess we're confusing people sometimes, right. DW. GTL's the, having their own team, I believe, with yeah, Dean Marini. And, and uh, uh, Easton right and Brad Helmer are having their own team. And they got Gino Buck. And a bunch of other guys. Tim Howard, I think. Fly out into the inning there. Or the half inning. Go to the bottom of the second. 454 coming to bat. What's your, your feeling on the, the entire season so far? You got to travel around the country. Right. got to see a number of conference events. Uh, the conference grew a little bit. More teams than ever played in conference events. Uh, the economy hit a little bit with teams folding up, you know, towards the end of the season, some of the lower class B teams. Uh, but overall, it was a little bit better year than, than the previous year, which it's been every year since 2006. Uh, we got a question from DC5645, wants to know, in your mind, who's the best overall player in the conference overall player it's a pretty tricky question yeah it's a loaded question you don't want to just say i mean helmer had the best year hitting but that's kind of all he's done is hit so i guess overall player you almost have to say tim howard or bryson baker tim howard center fielder for gtl bryson baker's a middle infielder for uh Chris Mondo. You probably have to go Baker. Canal, Canal and Baker were the MVPs, co-MVPs. 
but I, I, I'd say Bryson Baker. Don thanks Rogers, for, thanks for your question. Right. Nice stab by Spicer. Not sure why he bounced it over there. Did you see that? I did. Uh, the wet grass. It could have been a, a it's certainly been a night where the not these guys, but well, imagine the elements that Suncoast had to bear today right. to get through. I mean, Six first hours. incredible comeback. Right. Six hours of softball, rain on and off. You don't know whether you're playing, whether you're not playing. And then you got to play a team like Combat Laser Vision. Yep. Six you hours. You could win this men's major. Yeah, Sun Coast. I, I actually have the Adam Rockoff walk-off homer on the site right there. Philip White hit this one under the fence. That's the second time that I've seen that this weekend. It's a little strange. Brings up Evan Gallmeyer, bottom of the second, one out, game tied at now one. Stepping into the box, it'll be the center fielder, number 10, playing out of St. Louis, Missouri, Evan Gallmeyer. Going back to the best player question, they're asking me about Weggs or Spike Baker. You got to question those guys' seasons. They had good seasons, but they actually moved down the lineup on the third place team, so you'd almost have to say they didn't have the best season. Of anybody. Nice stop. Matt King safe at first. Matt King with a nice diving play right there. And the outstanding defensive I know this question Matt comes King. up a lot, DW. But if it's not responded, who do you think is the team that brings home the men's major title this year? Right, and remember to start the season at the Hall of Fame. GTL looked like the better team. Yeah, it looked like, you know, GTL was just bigger, faster, stronger, you know. But uh, as the season went on, Rosmondo took over. And I guess you'd, you have to say GTL because they beat Rosmondo the most times, but then... Uh, Laser Vision did beat him at the conference championship there the one time. Both teams have an outside shot. Someone asking if Suncoast will make a run the rest of the weekend. There's a walk to uh, Habermel to load the bases. I don't think Suncoast is going to make a run in this tournament. Which is kind of strange with the way that they played in the last tournament. I mean, they they certainly made a run at winning the whole thing in the conference. Right. Yeah, I don't know what to attribute that to. They won a bunch of real low-scoring games back on the backfield there, and then next thing you knew, they were in the championship. Bases loaded for Kevin Johnson. Inside out swing to left. And a running catch by looks like McLam. Kevin Johnson with the fly ball to left field. Making the catch and then the strong throw home is said logic. said logic. A hustling Philip White beats the throw. So Freddie Johnson with an RBI sacrifice fly. Runners at first and second, two outs, and now we'll go to the top of the order for this shortstop, number 14, playing out of Columbia, Missouri, Kevin Bazak. Top of the order, 454 takes the lead there, 2-1. Base hit. Oh, it's going to score one. Pretty amazing how low scoring this game has been so far. Yeah. No, no home it's runs. But the score is Evan Galmeyer, Abermel the third, Bazak the second, two on, two outs, and 
Here's Mitch May with two in scoring position. How do you feel about the way things were shuffled in this tournament uh, after the rain? I mean, especially if Disney's given us the boot at some point, you know, the curfew or whatever. Yeah, the boot's 2.30 a.m. Ah, it's 2.30. So here, here's your broadcast partner. Robo's had a long day. <laughs> you want, want a broadcast? We got DW for a little bit, and then we'll. I'm we'll good. Bring I can in. come back tomorrow night. All right, DW. Yeah. We appreciate you spending right. some time with us. <laughs> I got my yep. glasses on. What? Oh, long drive by uh, Mabe. It's going to end the inning. Mabe flies out. Leading wow. three to one. I guess we're going on a Facebook page. We took, let's say, slow pitch softball. Robo's back with us. We'll take a break as well. Three to one. 454 is on top. Well, as we walk into mutual action here so now one out in the third player. inning, stepping into the box, it'll be the first baseman, Eric Thompson. Chad McLam flying out for first out number one. Conference. Rick Robertson, glad to have you with us today, partner. It's been a long one for you. Yes, sir, it has. One of those days that you hate to be the uh, guy that's coordinating the, the D and the C, as D and DW and I were just talking about. Oh yeah, Neil Swarner. I, you know, he's the one coordinating down there. I don't have that problem. I got enough problems trying to get Disney to let us do what we need to do up here. 
you know, the whole day was the lightning factor. There's a nice play down there at third. And that's Eric Thompson lining that one to third. Going down to get it on a great defensive play is Mitch May. So he wraps Thompson. There's two outs. The bases are clear. Mitch Second May, two down. Top half of third. Back to what I was saying, Bernie. Most of our problem all day really wasn't the rain factor. It was the lightning. I spent a good portion of the afternoon down in the uh, duty manager's office. Met the lady, that girl named Sam. And uh, had quite a discussion on when we could come back and play. No, I know. It was, uh, you didn't want to be the event manager when you had to tell Don DiDonatis that they couldn't uh, play softball on this field. Yeah, that's. That wasn't the person you wanted to be in the world at that particular moment. No, and we, we chatted about that, Sam and myself, and we, uh, all things worked out the best we could, and now we've moved some games around. I think it'll work tomorrow. Home run derby, I'm sure you've announced, has been moved to Saturday. So we should be good to go as long as the weather, weather cooperates. And, I mean, that's the one thing we can't control. And actually, the, the, this stadium took the water a lot better than it did last month during A World. We, had, we lost Friday night in the stadium. I played Saturday. I didn't even play back in here on Sunday for the championship. Had to go back out to the, uh, you know, the quad. And that was Coco flying out to right field for the time. Uh, Selling top of the third. Rare to see that. Wow. Gene Chop able to score just a run. 454 leading three to two on Utrecht Plus A Live. Now we'll go to the bottom of the third and two up for team four, five, four. It'll be the heart of their order, Matt, Griffin, and Boyer. And we're back with Bubba Mack down the line and a home run up the hill there, painted with the U-Triple-S-A logo. About 387 up on that hill. Nice stroke, Bubba Mack. 454 was the 2011 Men's A-World Champion. Played over at Fortune Road last weekend. I mean, well, that was our B, I'm sorry. We played here last month. They played right here. They've played so many tournaments, tournaments row, but I don't even know how you keep track of them all. Yeah, they had they won a one run game to win the championship over RM Medals. Great job. Our B World that was at Fortune Road last week was uh, Dave Watnabi and Watnabi Blitz won the B World. Beautiful tournament as well. C and D world for men's going this weekend along with women's A B C D. Like a little better than 500 teams out there this weekend. All That's over. pretty amazing. Yeah, we, I don't even know how they have enough fields to do all that. Well, we lost some complexes. We're underwater. This one of the fields that we use, Seminole, is underwater. Fortune Road. 
had to cancel there, moved everything over to Osceola, didn't get, I don't even think they got rain, or if they did, very little. Cal Moyer now is your hitter. That one's hit pretty good. Ooh. He just needs to turn that one a little further right for 50 bucks off of Matt's car. <laughs> right over the edge of that yellow double wall back there. You know what you missed earlier today? Over 400. We had just gotten, we, we had talked about uh, Matt Parks' car right there in the power alley. And this guy pulls into the AAU parking spot, hops out of his car, and bashes his trunk right in midair. You know what? Two seconds later, he hopped back in his car and moved it to the other parking lot. <laughs> they obviously didn't get the memo. Not at all. It's only one car out there. It's <laughs> Don Rogers. Flies away, but he must be money bags. You know, he's just, he just must know somebody that's a good mechanic. Who's that, Matt? Yeah, because he just decides to put it right in the firing range. Oh, that's George Gonzalez. All pro collision. Dick <laughs> George Gonzalez, our international baseball vice president, has a wonderful body shop business. <laughs> he can fix anything. I guess that's what he does. He feels confident. Oh, yeah. Big oh, time. my. Straight away center. Oh. Come here. Come here. Come here. Light to third. Kyle Cowart to flee. Unable to chase it down off the wall straight away center. Six runs in for 454, two for shot, bottom half to third. Down to Earth Sports. Drew Dubberley, the uh, sponsor coach, says give a shout out to, to him and his crew. They'll. They'll actually play tomorrow. They play GTL. Nick wanted to know if there's a Suncoast Dark Side game going to be on the live stream page. We are in the process of archiving games. It takes a little time to take a game that we didn't get it up on the page. Usually a period of 24 to 48 hours. I know Cameron Cox is <laughs> missing on that as well. Our Cowboy fan, Chris Dixon, checking in from Baltimore, Maryland. Good weekend to be a Cowboy fan and not a Raven fan after last weekend. Going on the road and getting taken down by the Titans. That's a base on balls for Evan Allmeyers. Now runners are at the corner with one away for the catcher. Number two, Wayne Here's Wayne Habermel. Habermel. Aaron wants to know, is there a home run rule at the World Series? No, this is one of the this is the main event. We play unlimited home runs here. The only other one is Smoky Mountain Classic. It has a tradition of being unlimited. So we we play no home run rule. Conference U Triple S A and all the other tournaments. Major plays a major sixteen. Major plays anybody else twelve. And that's the all others eight. And that's throughout the conference. They come to the respective world tournaments like the A World would have eight, B World four, C World two, D World zero, E World zero, and then inning ending out and offensive rejection. So that's all of them in the men's program. Yeah, Chris Dixon mentioning the wow twenty six to thirteen. Is that what the score was last week? In the Ravens game, twenty six to thirteen. They are having a Steeler hangover. They felt like they won the World Series after that first one, Robo. <laughs> KJ, the pitcher. They knew it wasn't the Super Bowl because that hasn't happened in 10 years there. Here's KJ. He's up. KJ's over there on first. Eight R runs R now in for 454. Evan Johnson. Eight to two game, and now we go to the top of the order for the left-handed hitting shortstop number fourteen, Kevin Bazat. Kevin Bazat now in an eight to two ball game. This game far from over by any means. The shop came back this afternoon in their game. Oh, got him over there at second. That'll retire the side, bottom half the third. 454 picks up five runs. 
And they now lead 8-2 to two as we move into the top half, the fourth inning. At ESPN Live World Sports Live on UTSAlive.com. Check out conferenceutsa.com for all the updates in our 40th annual Men's Major World Series. So now we will go to the top of the fourth. Gene Shop staring at a six run deficit. They'll send up Powers, Jenter, and Booth. Lee Powers leads off the top of the fourth with a double. That ball was stuck under the fence out there in left field. And it's back now. So Bubba Mack digging it out. So Lee Powers gets things started with the ground rule double. And now stepping into the box. Now stepping in will be J.D. Jenner. Jenner. Scored in the second. Double zero in your program. And JD pumps one out there. Bubba Mack back to the wall, and he camps under it for the first out. And Powers tags up and moves over to third. It's that 28 end load Z1000. Yes, indeed. Hit about 333. And they need 335 to the wall, 336 to get out. We were talking a little bit on the broadcast earlier about uh, some changes coming down the line uh, with the bats in 2013. And yes. actually, the changes are going to be implemented in our organization earlier in some other sports. But coming 2013, maybe get the, the public up to date on the whole new bats that will be coming down the line a couple of years from now. Well, there will be a new bat with a new stamp on it, new marking that David Evall, our general counsel, is. And, and all the manufacturers, we could try to do some things for next year, but I don't think all the manufacturers certainly will be ready in 2012, but it should all be ready by 2013. And these bats... You know, once they get warm, too hot, and too hot meaning it gets too soft because you've hit it so many times with BP that it will break down. and That way, really, almost testing becomes a non-issue because they take care of themselves. And so essentially should, the bat will break. Yeah, it's going to break down or break, if you will. And you know, I'm, I'm interested to see how, how it is. I'd like to, you know, hopefully we get to see some and and use some of them in a few events to see how it's going to work before we go full bore. He's a, quite an entrepreneur, that David Evolve. Talking about, started off with Dean Marini in the 90s, helped push across some of the standards when they were first starting to get technology in bats. Yeah, and how, how far have we come since the first Dean Marini bat exploded on the market? 
Everybody had to have one. It's Matt King driving the ball in the gap. Up against the wall, Bubba Mack chases it down. And that was a laser and shot out there. That drives Matt in one King run. With the double. Shot. Still trails by five, eight, three. Brad Chris Dixon from the last conversation is getting married, honestly. Congratulations to him. Oh, that's great. You got a fiance as well, from what I understand, Robo. Yes, been engaged, uh, what, 11 going on 12 years? She was wondering where you were earlier on our Facebook page. And oh, she was on Facebook when I was. Brad Anna. <laughs> yeah. I told her you're out busy, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> My computer's broke, and uh, Steve, I got Steve to order me a new one. So she can't go get on the computer at home. She doesn't want to use the one from the office I have. She, want, she doesn't want to go have to sit in the other room. So hopefully by I get back next week, I'll have her a computer ready. She can listen some at work. But all our people, I mean, you know, it's great that uh, I think Paul was mentioning some 40-plus thousand viewers. 40-plus thousand page views on our page wow. just in the first uh, couple days of the tournament. That's right. the brand-new conference, U-Triple-S-A site. You know, it takes a, a lot of work. we got a bunch of people that uh, help and put it together in just a number of days as opposed to months, as they told me it should have taken when we first talked about the idea. But they got it done in in weeks as opposed to months, which was key. And then you got a good uh, uh, up-and-coming journalist writing these articles. And I know for maybe the purebred slow-pitch people, maybe they're not written as slow-pitch oriented as some people like. But if you could go on there and you could find out, hey, what happened in the D2E game, there's a good synopsis. I think they're doing a nice job of letting you know what's happening. Well, I, and I think people are certainly going to enjoy that. It's with I me. Mean, Kind of like going to ESPN.com, but for slow pitch right here at Conference U Triple S A. That's amazing. You know, I'm, I'm kind of technologically challenged, <laughs> so I'm pretty impressed. Well, we got it set up just so you could go there and read the article as well after the ball game. That's what I'm going to do on my iPhone. That ball's hit deep. Man, Mitch Mabe hit that one a ton. Oh, nice catch out there by the young man, too. Did you see that, Graham? That was unbelievable. <laughs> Mitch wow. Into that one. Nine to three lead for 454. Bring up the left fielder, number 25 from Milton, Florida, Mac. We've come so far, Bernie, since my first men's major world series in 1983. Greensboro, North Carolina. Bubba Mack hits one. That's long. That's deep. Oh, and that's out of here, too. Right below the Champion Stadium sign. Kyle Carrot was on the move, but unable. So we have back-to-back -back jacks. And that's a home run. One unbelievable home shot by Mitch Mabe to lead off. And then right behind him, Bubba Mack. Back-to-back jacks for Mabe and Mack. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the right fielder, number 20, Brent Griffin. Number 20, Brent Griffin. They call him Fish. And that's a solid left Met his Brent wife. Griffin. He came He's to visit us at the B World. In the ball game. Beautiful young daughter. And he'll bring up the first baseman, Kyle Boyer. Kyle with a two-run home run in his last at bat. Got to bring my daughter out to one of these yes. events. It's well past her bedtime, unfortunately. Yeah, quarter to 11 at night, I hope. How is she doing, my little sweetheart? Doing well. Yes. Seven months old, and she goes to oh. bed sharply at 7 every night. Oh, well, she sleep all night? Uh, depends. She's working on sleeping. It's a skill that's <laughs> yet to be acquired. She's more interested in the world, but I guess she's only gotten to see it for nine months. <laughs> She hasn't got to our age where if you could get an extra 20 minutes of sleep, you'd be overly enthusiastic. Always. Kyle Moyer with a double. Brent Griffin over the third. Runners in second third. Nobody out. Bottom of the fourth. 
10 runs for 454 shot trails 10 7 10 3 excuse me by 7 Don Rogers the second baseman the batter John Rivera would like to know what is Gene shop is it a business of some sort as Rogers hits this one to the wall and they'll score two more yeah that's you know it's uh, Greg Blackburn. If I remember the story correctly, it uh, was his mother's, like a, <laughs> like a jean shop, purse and type Rogers of you know, business. I always call call him Mr. Blackburn. Some people call him Mr. Mr. Jean Shop, and I didn't see him here this weekend. I don't know if he's coming in. I know his wife had had some, uh, been having some health issues. Fabulous sponsor. You'll always hear him. Oh, oh, oh. Got the dog barking in the dugout. Uh, we just, inducted him into the uh, Hall of Fame a season ago. Yes. A member of the USSA National Hall of Fame. His coach, manager, Larry Cortuccio, will be inducted this year. Speaking we got a of, chance to talk to Larry uh, two days ago. As we start to put together some of those videos for the Hall of Fame induction. Speaking of Larry, he's called time. There's two more runs scored. It's 12 for 454. And I'm not so sure. He may be having a pitching change here. And the boys are playing some good music. They got a couple on their iTunes up there. Get the fans rocking. Well, I think that's been one of the disappointing things. I think the rain really pushed away some of the people. We had a real great crowd last night. Oh, it was. Yeah, of course, the, the beer sales, $16,000 worth of beer <laughs> was sold last night here. Wow. At Champion Stadium. And for those of you that want to know, USSA saw the big zero out of that. That was a Disney profit. I know sometimes that's a point of contention, but uh, that's how many people we had on the stands, just to give you an idea. That's a big number. For sure. Two seeds getting a bye. Detail this motto. They'll play tomorrow. Paul O'Leary is a multifaceted man out there on the platform. And he also helped create the Conference U Triple SA webpage. Philip White, the batter. Nobody out. Runner at third. There he is. You know, the Brits can climb ladders. It's slippery out there. That's a dangerous thing. Rubbish, I say. Rubbish. But not only does he help create conference USSA.com, but he uh, helps get the battery restored so you can watch the home plate view out there. Just got a great group of selfless guys as you do on the uh, umpire and crew helping us out tonight. Their staff is very unique, Bernie. Very unique staff. Galmar, that ball is high and short and in the center. The high fly ball in the left center field. Kyle Coward with the catch and one away. Chief Stasher would like to know, do major players get paid to play? And if so, is it enough to support a family? Or do these guys have other jobs as well as playing softball? And I think almost all of them have some other jobs that are there. Oh, yeah, most everybody has another job of some type. They, they are confident. Or they don't have a family they're supporting. Right. They have, you know, personal services contracts. They're representing different manufacturers. 
you know that's how they're compensated. And sometimes that may be their other job is to represent the bat manufacturer bat sales. Yeah they may be on the road so many days and weeks a year and then when the weekends to play tournaments of course they're they're here. Oh nice shot right up the middle. Habermill to catch it drives it right past the pitcher. But for the most part, the guys that are playing here are doing it for the love of the uh, the game and the opportunity. Oh, yeah. And it's a base hit for Hammermill, right to third. Runners at the corners with one out. And at this level, none, none of them are playing 15, for free. <laughs> Let's go that way. <laughs> After all, this is as close to major leagues as you're going to see. I mean, this is the major leagues of slow pitch softball. Chase wants to know should the sponsors pay them? That's essentially yes. Yes. Man, you'll hear Gene Shop, TPS, you know, they have three or four names behind them. TPS is their the bat they swing. Rosmondo swings worth. GTL Beamerini. Combat has, you know, mostly combat. Brett Helmer and Brian Wegman swing Easton. So, you know, EWS is an Easton, Easton sponsored team. One Look hopper. Second out of the inning. Lee Powers one hopped it over to second. For the second out, and 13 to 3. 454 with a 10 run lead. They're back to the top of the lineup. Kevin Bazat, their second baseman. A couple of hits so far in this game. And Mitch May on deck, Bubba Mack in the hole, and they went back to back last time they came up. See if we can get one here hit. Right over the uh, in the power alley towards the White Mountaineer. The White Mountaineer, Matt O'Hara's vehicle parked in the danger zone. We have a bounty on this 50 bucks, 50 not bucks. much, I know, for these guys. <laughs> I don't have a sponsor yet, Robo. No. Hey, maybe I can get Drew from Down to Earth Sports to sponsor that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing when we talk about sponsors. We do have some great sponsors in this game. Oh, Eric Thompson unable to make the play. One run in. Here comes another one. They're waving Maloney home. And that's in a third. For Kevin Billy Register would like to know who do you think Maloney. the best newcomer to the conference the was this season? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I know uh, Nick Robertson, Marnin Mellows. Man, he may have been, but he just seems like an awful young guy just coming along. Of course, I'm a little partial. He does have my last name. He played very well in the uh, in the A World. They were runners up. They got a trivia question for you. I'm okay. not sure if this is the correct answer, but uh, we'll test your skills and find out whether this man knows. But I'm told that I'm right now currently standing to the right of the youngest player ever to win a men's major title on a team. That is correct. Matt O'Hara, pinch runner extraordinaire. Pinch ran for Rosmondo. 2007. I don't know if it was seven or eight. I couldn't remember. Sure did appear. Mitch Fabe, 
Coming in to score is Kevin Bazaar. That's, That's exactly right. A 16 to 3 game. Runner in second. Two outs. World in the box champion. Bump a match. Bump a match. Matt O'Hare. The World Series lead with four home runs. <laughs> John Rivera wants to know all these teams get breaks after Worlds or they play all year round. Is Bubba Max at the plate? Uh, they don't play all year round together as teams. Sometimes they go bunch up and play. You know, there's a big Toys for Tots tournament out in California. That ball's pretty deep. That one just stayed fair oh. and it's gone. Bubba Mack and with another home run. Bubba Mack hit a home run this previous at bat. That ball just cleared the fence. Wow. Bringing in Mitch May, 18 to 3 now in favor of 454. So Bubba Mack with the two run home run. He's now hit five. Rick said logic to left fielder backed all the way to the wall. Carry it out of here. Nice Ten play. runs in the inning for 454. 18-3 is their lead as we head to the fifth in the 2011 U.S.A. Men's Major. We will now go to the top of the fifth and do up for Gene Shop. It'll be Moon, Sedlicek, and Howard. My name is Jim Gordon. I'm the Royal Division. Hey, I'll be playing with Gene Shop team this season. The first team I'm playing for is Oklahoma CPS 1998. That was a class A or above. Uh, and I've been playing class A manager since then. Well, I, I, love the, I love the sponsorship and the leadership of Greg Blackburn and Larry Cortuccio. I've been with Larry, Larry Q for a long time. Um, and just, uh, just how professional and organized you know, the team and sponsorship is. I can't say enough about how the sponsor is. Uh, just a great guy. I like the Z1000 because immediately, you know, once you pull a bat out of the wrapper, uh, it, it's ready to go. I mean, in terms of a breaking period, how long it's going to take, so you're going to get, you know, 60, 70, 20, you're back. I mean, this is the game ready. I like the Z1000 for control in that with the with the longer sweet spot or bigger sweet sweet spot. It feels like I can I can move and move the ball depending on the situation, which is crucial for our game. Our game is changing, you know, with the evolution where before everybody used to be able to hit Now you have to move the ball around. And I feel control-wise, I've got plenty of control and I can move the ball around. Intimidate at the plate with Louis Bonsoir, The 40th edition of the Men's Major World Series for you. Right here at ESPN Wild World of Sports. Champion Stadium, home of the Atlanta Braves spring training. Again, tomorrow morning, you should know, softballcenter.com is going to have the loser's bracket action. Oh, great. DW is going to. DW is going to bring all those games for you, and I believe our coverage starts at 4.30. That'll be the GTL down-to-earth game. So tomorrow morning we have games stay the same schedule as we originally had, the 8, 9.30 loses bracket, 11 and 12.30. And then we come back at 4.36, 7.30 and 9. The winner of GTL down to earth will play right back at 6, and I believe they play combat laser vision, if I remember. The winner of this game plays the winner of Rosmondo R&M tomorrow night. So it's kind of funny because we've seen both sides of it. You know, for the teams that played today, an advantage because you're not having to play to tomorrow. But sometimes there's an advantage of playing that quote-unquote warm-up game right before you play a second game. Probably not the way Suncoast had to do it today where they had to play the game over the course of six hours. No, that took a lot out of those guys. I mean, they did a great job coming back and winning that first game. Look at this ball. Take off. 
What a shot. That ball's rattled off the fence. Wow. And that one is laced to right field, a line drive that just kept carrying it. One hops the wall and set left. And that was Rick said logic. Third. Now we got one on, one out, and it brings up the center field. And he says, hey, Rick Robertson, you know what? For an 83-year-old man, you look really good. <laughs> <laughs> I said, dude, I thought I was 84 or 85, but thanks for the compliment. <laughs> when I was in my LSU purple, or as Matt calls it, my Raven purple, and we were out there at the uh, at the conference championships, and he said, "Man, I, you style it, Rick." Got a question for you. Home run derby moved uh, Saturday night, so we got another night to ponder it. Who do you think will win the home run derby? We'll see uh, Coco with a three feet, and we'll post that on our facebookcom slash a slow pitch page and get your insight as well. Well, he, the one thing as I said yesterday, the ball carries very well here. In right field, so your left-handers, you would think, would have an advantage. The Brett Helmers, the Timmy Cocos. You know, then you got you have, you know, a perennial favorite that leads the country every year, and that's Greg Cannell. Denny Crine's playing this year. Actually, he's the first hitter. I I don't remember the whole rotation, but the first round is a player from each team, one of player off each of the 16 teams. They'll vie for four spots to play them. There's 17. There was a tie in there. So we will have 21 players batting off in the second round. Now, between now and Saturday, I have to get the official rules from Don. But I know he's got some new wrinkles in there that should make it really exciting for for the players and the fans. I think the biggest wrinkle is I think if you hit a home run in your last fall, you get yes. to keep hitting. And, and you hit till you make an out. So, that, you know, if you hit a home run on your – whatever the number of pitches we decide, that last one, then you continue. So that's, that could be exciting. I don't I don't know yet what the number of, you know, like if we give them seven swings to hit five or eight to hit six, and usually it starts off at one number and goes down as each round. But we'll get all those details, and we'll announce that as we, as we begin on Saturday. Derek would like to know, is there a mercy rule at this level? Yes, there is. We haven't mentioned it yet, but it is 15 after 5. It's 30 right after. We're just underneath that. Go ahead, Robo. It's 30 after 3, 20 after 4, 15 after 5. For those of you, that's, you know, if the home team is winning by 15, they wouldn't have to bat in the bottom of the fifth. So currently here, it's 18 to 4. It's only 14 runs. So let's say they got shop out with two outs in a row. Then all 454 has to do is score one, and the final would be 19 to 4. And whenever we get to the flip flop, if that were to come about, some people get really confused. We played a flip flop rule. If that's the home team is losing in the inning prior to the run rule, they would stay in and become the new visiting team. So you gain like a half an inning normally. Well, just to speed up the game, some good rules, especially when you're playing a lot of softball over the weekend. Oh, yeah, and it's, you know, people are already getting beat bad enough. <laughs> That's why people call it the mercy rule, the run rule. Chase wants to know how were the guys chosen for the stadium tour, and that's not really a USSA thing. Oh, as far as home run hitting, no, I, I have no idea. For the long haul bombers. Yeah, the long haul tour. We do the one here by, you know, giving each team a, a representative in the first round, and then the others are the top 16 hitters throughout conference U-Triple-S-A. And that's what I think some people were questioning. They kept looking at who's hitting in the home run derby, and they're like, hey, here's, where's Rusty Bumgarner? Where's his, uh, you know how it goes on. And the yeah. answer is they weren't either in the top 16 or they weren't picked as the representative from their team. And, and each team had a choice. You just tell us which guy you want to hit. Long run. They want to know, do they have to use the same bats that they're hitting in the tournament? No, most of the time these guys will keep one on the side for home run derby. It's just easier for them because you don't really want to, you don't want to hit your gamer. 
and if you will, you, you just want to hit one in the home run derby bag. So there's two outs, runners hold at first and second, and into the box it'll be the additional hitter, the man who led all of Conference Future Plus A in home run frequency during the year, Tim Coco. Question from Greg is how can a team qualify for world tournaments? They didn't win an NIT a place in the top 25 in state, national, and world tourneys. I think uh, one of those ways to qualify is if you were the top point, you know, if you got the top number of points in your division, say a team finished second and played every weekend, they would gather more points than winning, say, an NIT. I know that's one way. I don't. I, I really don't have that answer. Tim Coco trying to test out that right field corner that he has enjoyed hitting to so much. That's a line. That's, that's, that's a that's Jimmy gone. Coco swing that we know. And that's a line drive. That ball jumped out of here. Line drive right line off of Coco's bat. Right so four runs. runs. Now 18 to seven. It's an 18 to that's seven. an 11-run lead. And just as they did the in their previous the game, power. they are mounting a comeback. And we'll see if Gene Shop's got enough left in the tank. 18 to 7, two away, top half to fifth. Lee Powers, the third baseman, the batter. KJ Kevin Johnson, the pitcher. And Powers drives the ball deep to left. But it's not going to get out of here as Bubba uh, Mack oh, makes the catch and retires the side. However, that's right, they picked up four. They'll need four to end the ball game. Team 454 will hit in the bottom of the fifth when we come back after this word from Dean Marini. And so Team 454 will come to back in the bottom of the fifth with an 11 run lead. Two up, it'll be Griffin, Moyer, and Rogers. Kevin Philby. I play for GTL Cartel Di Marini. I'm swinging the uh, GTL Cartel Di Marini bat, uh, the 28 ounce in load. To, to be confident with what you're swinging is, you know, half the battle. This game is 60% mental. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how much you work out. I don't care how hard you work on your game. Obviously, all those things come into play. But when you get in the batter's box and, and know that you're swinging a piece of equipment that's second to none, you, you've got an upper hand from that point. When I get up to the, to the plate and it's not a home run situation and I've got to hit it through the hole down and hard, I, I know that, that my chances are increasing with swinging this bat. go. If Maxwell wants to know what type of ball they'll Your use for the home run derby robo, we're going to use the same one that we got out here. That is correct. The stadium ball. And I know that uh, there has been some question. With uh, the D and the C, they're wondering when the D bracket will be updated. 6.30 game should be over by now with one pitch. And sometimes the bracket is a challenge to get uh, up to date, especially when you have a night like you do tonight. I'm oh. well, we're in a different things. area than they are, so we, unfortunately we don't have that insight for you, Felicia, so I apologize. And that's the long Kyle long Moyer long. flies out to Kyle Cowart to the deepest part of right center field, right there to the right of the 400-foot sign. One away, bottom of the fifth. A little bit, but he will haul it in off the track. It's now stepping into the box. It'll be the second baseman, Don Rogers. 
Dennis Turner. What happened to Dennis Turner? Didn't he start the year with 454? He, I believe so. Uh, DT, as we call him, and everybody else does. He's the worst rep. So uh, 454 definitely is the worst team. He's still around. I just don't think he's playing anymore. I don't. I don't recall if he was injured or what played a part in that. Ball hit deep to right field, and that ball just foul by Don Rogers. It was a fair ball. Well, he might have fouled out. I want to say that looked like a foul ball from here. I think it's a foul ball strikeout, Matt. Foul ball strikeouts. You don't get any courtesy foul at this level. John wants to know, has there been any discussion about a new ball in the conference and the World Tournaments, the ZN, how it turns to mush when it gets hot? I'm wondering if there's another option. And, uh, you know, I think that they're well, always trying to advance the game and advance the technology, but as of right now, it looks like this has been the best option. Ball by Philip White. Up by the U-Triple-S-A logo, 19 now to 7. Uh, Classic M is the ball we've been, that's our official ball all year long in conference U-Triple-S-A. I don't know, I don't think saying the ball turns to mush when it gets hot is really the exact terminology there. It may not perform quite as well. Classic Plus has been an option that some people would like to see. It's a little bouncier, if you will. We found that the Classic M is the best ball, you know, on our 300-foot parks. And we're not playing in the stadium. When we're playing in the stadium, that's why the uh, stadium ball was created, because it will travel and perform a little bit better here in the stadium. So, uh, once again, David Ebal, our general counsel and the board of directors, of course, Dom, they, uh, they look at the options all the time. Shot, base hit, Habermill. White over to third, Habermill at first, two down. 12 run lead for 454. And the winning run conceivably could be stepping to the plate. A couple of people chime in who will win the home run derby. A couple of votes. Uh, Canel or Coco, Jeremy and Jen Stubbs voting for Larson, Flip, or Gino, the big GTL group there. The G- well, I tell you right now, any one of those guys could win it. But when these guys perform in front of a huge crowd, sometimes the numbers just aren't what you think they might be. And Timmy Coco. Until you beat him, he's the man. He's been the man back-to-back years. Kevin Johnson. Uh, Kevin will not, KJ's not going to hit it out of here. He, uh, he's a base hitter. He's not a power hitter. Strike called to work the count full to two and one. That's Dwayne Posovich behind the plate. Don Toto Lombard at first. Mike McKinney. Mr. Happy down there at second. And Rob Matlow out of North Carolina over at third. Look at KJ and told you base hit it right in there. Left field. And that's it's the 20th run. 27. 22 seven is the score. Left-handed hitting shortstop Kevin Bazat. Number 14 in your program. Bazat, <laughs> the speedy one. Oh, he's not going to get on here. This is going to retire the side. We're going to play the sixth inning. We move onward and upward to the sixth. 13 run. 454 lead. We're having a lot of fun here at the men's major. We've been here since 9 a.m. and our coverage continues after this word 
from Morris. Side, picks up two runs. And they get the two runs on four hits, they strand two, will go to six. My name's Don DiDonatis, I played baseball at Eastern Michigan University. I'm from Sterling Heights, Michigan. I now live in Kissimmee, Florida. When I think of work, the first thing I think of is the best bats and technology on the market. It definitely helps my game to have a comfortable bat that I trust in my hand because there's times where I'm asked to base hit the ball and move it around, but with having a bat that I'm fortunate enough to swing in my hand, I have the confidence that I need to hit a home run or be put in that spot that I can do that. I tell everyone who asks me, you know, what bat should I swing? You know, if I'm picking out a worth bat, what bat should I swing? And honestly, you know, the answer I give to everybody is the honest answer. You just need to find a bat that feels comfortable for you, whether it's the one piece, two-piece, end load, balance, and every bat is high-tech and is the best of its kind. It's just a matter of finding what fits your swing or your performance. Be the best you can be with work. Well, it's quite ironic. But our man from Jasper, Tennessee, J.D. Jenner, JD Jenner 28 end load Z1000. From Jasper, Tennessee, as you said. You know, we might play his commercial at the end of the inning if he could get a home run. Oh, right and up the middle. And he said the large sweet spot makes up for his mistakes, and I think it may have made up for one right there. J.D. hustling into center, hit it. Pass KJ, the pitcher, Kevin Johnson. Greg Rohr wants to know how Donovan Pokrak is doing for GTL. Oh, he had a phenomenal year, all-conference player, left fielder, great defensive player, nice power. He's an all-around really, really good player. Well, if you want to find out what happened in the combat laser vision game earlier, the 28-8 to game, that update, is available at conferenceutriplesa.com, the new home for all the updates in slow pitch softball. Corey Booth, the batter, he pops one in the left, Bubba Mack. It's a beat on it. I want to remind everybody, uh, Bernie, that our thoughts and prayers go out to the Brian Basserby family, coach from Sinister, passed away over the weekend. Nice gesture of Sinister to wear jerseys with the BB on it. A couple of guys had the BB initials in their hair, cut into their haircuts. and. Uh, well, what a great friend of slow pitch softball he was. I actually, the last time we were here, gave him last month in the A World a drive, you know, a ride back to the parking lot. You know, they look great, sound great. Said see you in a couple of weeks, Rick, and uh, you know, saw him at conference. Then he passed. Also, uh, Kevin Negley, a board of director for UTSA, and a great friend of mine. His father passed away Thursday. Of course, our thoughts and prayers to the entire Negley family as well. Matt King deep and gone. And that ball is out of here. Two run home run. A couple more on our Facebook question on who's going to win the home run derby. Yeah. Eric Joris picked Kyle Moyer to win. Oh, that's James a, that's uh, a nice Sardar pick. the third goes with Big Bad Coco or Sweet Swinging Denny Crine. Denny Crine, uh, the hard part for him, he's the leadoff guy out of the whole night. <laughs> of course, he could set the pace. He's done very well in the past in some of these home run derbies. Bryant's covering them all. He's going with Crying Coco and Bryson Baker. 
pound for pound, people call him the best hitter in slow pitch. It's an advantage, I think, uh, to being able to be set up to hit it over the right field wall here. It's certainly set up to your advantage at this ballpark. Yeah, it is. Another good shot by Brad Record, but not going to be enough. That's two down. Top half to six. Shop has nine runs, but they still trail by 11, 29. Saw my buddy Bobby Wolford, the my barber umpire. Mark Did you? Town and Country Barbershop, Greenwood, Arkansas. I might be able to, in the need of a haircut, how do you think he'd do? Hey, he would do a great job. I can get it. Well, I got to wait till he gets finished umpiring, though, Bernie. <laughs> Moon. Grounds out. Uh oh And he's going to reach safely because the ball popped out of the first baseman's glove. Kyle Moyer comes off the bag and then. But to tag him and the ball just fell out. You don't want to give Gene Shop an extra out or any team at this level. All yeah, this might be the moment that Gene Shop works their way back. Got a shout out to the other umpire crew. They're back at the condo listening. So uh, Chuck Doc Beckwell, Jason Overlag, the pride of Arkansas. Tony Walzak and Mr. Ken Hawk. So they're back over at the condo. They'll come in tomorrow at the uh, second round of loser bracket games. They'll, I mean, there's eight and nine thirty will be this crew, and then eleven and twelve thirty will be the uh, Doc Beckwell crew. They got to be some of the hardest working people in America. Well, they work to sit to. So, unfortunately, these guys end up with the late shift and they got to come back early because they would have been off early without the rain. I have two crew chiefs, uh, Don Toto Lombard from Kansas. He's, uh, he's over there at first. He's the crew chief here. And then Chuck Doc Beckwell is the crew chief of the other one. Kenny wants to know how big of a pickup Wayne Habermel was for 454. Seems like he's been a great spark this week. Oh, he's a great pickup. Um, word I hear on the street is this is his last year and he will retire. Won't be coming back next year. So Wayne's been in the played softball for a long, long time, a number of years. Pretty quiet. Let's his bat do the talking. The flea, Kyle Cowart, number 25 with two down here, top of the sixth. Oh, he puts a charge into Kyle it. Kyle Cowart, deep and gone. Tack on three. You can put it on the scoreboard. Yes. And Kyle Cowart takes it for a three-run bomb to right. Second home run of the game. Second one of the game for Kyle Cowart. What I said, you can't give him an exit out, Bernie. Now there's five runs in. They've closed the gap to eight. We were talking about a possible run rule last inning, and now they've got the deficit cut to eight. Do they have another comeback in them? Could have. You just never know. Chad McLam. Right field of the batter. And he drills it past Kyle Moore. That's going to head towards the corner. Think about the mistake that led to these extra runs, bro. But we should have been done. Yeah, a little bit of a At wild least with throw. this top half of the inning. Wide throw. Kyle Moore tried to make the tag, dropped the ball. Shop's got another runner in scoring position, and Eric Thompson, the first baseman, he'll step to the plate. Eric doesn't hit any home runs or many at all, if any. Base hitter, one of the leading. 
hitters in conference you triple SA but this time he pops it up to center. Well, that's going to retire the side top half to six shot picks up five they still trail 20 to 12 as 454 comes to bat in the bottom half of the sixth inning. The 40th Andrew U Triple SA Men's Major World Series ESPN Wide World of Sports. We'll be back after this word from your man from Jasper, Tennessee, JD Jenner. JD Jenner uh, from Jasper, Tennessee. Been playing slow pitch softball since about '96. The major level since about '99. Swing the 28 in load, three went out. PPS back in the 90s, 2000, you know, it was the only bat out there. They spent a few years working, and now I love that I'm part of them coming back out this new Z1000. They've done the research, they've got the correct bat out there now. I've always swung a one piece bat, and, and I used to not like a two piece because it would always get soft and flimsy, I felt like, and it would take away. But the Z1000 doesn't do that. Uh, you have the soft feel, you don't get any vibration because of it, but it feels just like a one piece when you're hitting as far as the performance. To me, the sweet spot's very large on the bat. It's, you can hit it even down towards the handle some. It's very good performance that way. It, you know, it, it makes up for my mistakes. I love the bomber uh, This will be my third year doing it. It's great. You get out there, you get to meet the fans, you get to be in the ballpark. You have, have people on Facebook all the time asking if we're coming. You know, it's just a great publicity to get out there and really get one on one with a lot of the fans out there. Um, just glad that I represent TPS and doing that because, you know, that's where you, you touch home with a lot of people. Louisville Slugger, TPS, we're back. Mitch Mabe leads off the bottom half of the six here for 454 with a single. And that'll bring up Bubba Mack. He has home runs in his last two plate appearances. The left fielder, Bubba Mack. In there for strike one. And Bubba hits another one deep, and that one's gone, and that one's out of here. He is on a roll, three home runs in a row, back to back to back of plate appearances from Bubba Mack. Now 454, back to a 10-run lead, double digits, 22 to 12, bottom half the sixth inning. Question from Kelly Kirby. Now that Laser Vision has made it to the final four of the winner's bracket, are they going to ride one pitcher or rotate the three that they have pitched? That's a question for uh, Don Cooper and his staff. I'm a firm believer if you got a good horse, ride him. Of course, they've got three pretty good pitchers for that team. So. Well, I'm talking to DW early. He thinks that's the biggest key for GTL to help them win the men's major this year is having the likes of Gino Buck, who's arguably one of the top pitchers in this entire conference. Yeah, he's he's definitely, you know, he was all-conference pitcher along with Andy Purcell, who most people figure is the uh, the number one pitcher in the game. Moyer flies it out to medium-deep right field. And Kyle Moyer with the high fly ball. 454 played well so far. It leads 22 to 12. Two down. Bottom half to six. Don Rogers the batter. Well, coming into this tournament, Bernie, most people, of course, will always favor Rosmondo, and uh, you know they're, they've won more championships than anybody. But you also uh, a lot of the, I think the money that would if people were really had a betting line was. One of the favorites, if not the favorite by most people, was Combat Laser Vision. 
him. You know, I would have, I'd have personally thought GTL, you know, would have been a betting favorite. Rogers will draw the walk. We saw combat defeat Resmondo in the uh, conference tournament. Yeah, they actually what run ruled in the conference championships. Then they run ruled and what in the finals of the winners bracket. And then Resmondo came back and double dipped him. That's correct. I didn't get to come up top and guest announce with you. I was. I know. I didn't know what was up with that. Well, I was running bats. And you know, you were running such a big weekend. tournament that weekend. You just didn't have time for us peons. Uh oh. No, you, you guys are the. You guys are the glue. <laughs> Philip White now. That should retire the side. So, no half game in this one, no partial game. We play the full set. We head to the seven. Hey, that's but the Dean Shop needs ten yeah, to move that's on. A, it's a pretty good number. But, you know, you look at the time, Bertie, it's, what, 11.33? It's been a half bad night. We started at 9, and here we are before midnight getting out of here. But we couldn't play two more games, and you certainly wouldn't want to play one. Yeah, we would have had a hard time other. playing the next game Wait. now. Yeah, because you really don't want us doing anything fast. The curfew's 2 a.m. You have to be out by 2. They don't really want you doing anything past 12.30, you know, 12 o'clock. So, I mean, we'd be in trouble. Well, I know there, there was a gentleman that was watching from England, and it's about time for tea over there now. Really? Well, it's five, I forget uh, what the time differential is. We got plus five hours, so we're oh. uh, we're not quite at tea time. It's at 4:30, but he he might be rising shortly over there. A colleague well, of our partner, Paul O'Leary, seems yeah, like. A rubbish, I say. Rubbish. <laughs> And I've learned more different ways to pronounce words incorrectly since Paul's <laughs> moved into our office. <laughs> I never knew what an idea was. <laughs> Add the, the R, idea? Wireless. That was another <laughs> one that I learned. It's like my umpire out at second, uh, Mike McKinney. Yeah? Uh, they leave out ours. You don't park the car, you pack it. Home run derby champion Tim Coco to lead off top of the seventh. Two hopper. One away. Base. Patrick Klug wants to talk. He uh, mentions in honor of the J.D. Genter commercial, which is one of our favorites and the partner here at UFFSA Louisville Sluggers. What everybody wants to think about the Z1000. Oh, it seems like everybody's creating the real good bat. They're one of our good partners here at USSA, and that one is hot right out of the wrapper. Hank Bassett, our Louisville TPS partner. Do you think 454 can beat Rosmondo if they are both in the championship championship game? Chase Thrasher? Yes. 454 is and very capable of beating Rosmondo. Right the third baseman and a nice pickup made by Mitch May. Well, they can hit the long ball as well. That's why you have to play the game. Anything can happen. I mean, you know, you can talk to, to anybody. And we're in the stadium. So power is a big game, but if you have speed and can hit the gaps, you can run all day and then you play defense, you, you're going to beat some people. And that can happen to anybody. Lee so power is third uh, baseman. The final hope. And we're back to J.D. Jenner and his 28-ounce end load Z1000. And he hails from Jasper, Tennessee. He's going to walk to first set. I'll give you guys the backstory because I know we got probably thousands of people wondering what the heck we're talking about. <laughs> but you're watching the game here on your 
your iPads tonight, partially because of the great efforts of the man that created the Conference U-Triple-S-A page. And when we first got things to work, J.D. Jenner's commercial was what would go over and over and over again in multiple bit rates. So they got to hear that commercial a number of times so they can uh, basically recite it as Booth is going to fly out to end the ball game. Final score in this one, 454, 22 to 12. Well, Robo, we do appreciate you spending some time with us tonight, and we hope we'll see you again tomorrow. Yes, sir. DW's got it in the morning. You guys step back and uh, begin filming or video. 4.30. 4.30. GTL down to earth. And our buddy down to earth, Drew Deverly. Hey, go by and see him at Down to Earth Sports when you get back in town. Sounds good. Until then, for all of us U Triple SA, we appreciate you joining and tuning in. Uh, great coverage online, conferenceutriplesa.com. Don't forget to tune in and watch there. Losers bracket action tomorrow with DW, softballcenter.com. For our entire crew that's worked so hard tonight from 9 a.m. to nearly midnight. Bernie got there saying good night from the men's major in the U-Triple-S-A World Series. We'll see you down the road and enjoy the rest of the evening and what's left of it.